Yo, what is up guys? It is Small, and today we're going to be talking all about Remuru, one of the units that is featured in the current rotation for the Slime Collab banners, who will be running for two weeks. If you guys didn't know, this unit is very, very strong in PvP. He has multiple builds you can actually run on him, and we're going to be featuring both of those in this video. We're just going to talk about where you want to pick him and how strong he actually is. Before we actually talk about his builds though, guys, let's talk about his skills very, very quickly because there's a lot of text in pretty much all of his skills, and it can be very, very confusing. So it's S3, guys. It is a single target attack and a successful attack, so it has to land, will inflict 5,000 additional fixed damage to the target, and this fixed damage can actually scale up to the maximum amount of 10,000, depending on the number of buffs granted to all of your allies. Also, when the target is buffed, you will defense break all enemies for two turns, and this does not get affected by elemental disadvantage, so you can actually use this and land it on fire units. The only time you have to be scared of this not landing is against units with evasion built in, such as like Violet, Remnant Violet, anything on like Moonlight Dreamblade or another evasion artifact. You just have to be wary about that, but for the most part, this should land most of the time. You can actually soul burn this for only 10 souls to reduce the cooldown by two turns, making this very very strong if you can actually soul burn this and constantly cycle it especially on a tankier build this skill becomes very very powerful in longer fights now we have his s2 guys it is a passive ability you're going to see when you attack with a non-basic skill you're going to actually copy two buffs of the target regardless of whether the attack hits or not and you'll apply this buff to not only yourself but your entire team also you're going to see that there's a secondary effect when an ally is attacked by a buffed enemy you're going to activate be ready against the attacker which is a counter attack this can only activate once every three turns and this attack hits very very hard and also will increase your cr by 30 percent next we have his s1 single target attack that will grant you a random buff and as you can see the buffs are on your screen here pretty much all the buffs are pretty good because of this guys you can actually run him on like i said a tankier build which you see on your screen here if you can run him on a tanky build i recommend speed set for sure and then the secondary set can be whatever defensive set you want defense is okay hp is okay effect resist is okay i recommend hp though because just having him bulkier is better for artifact guys i like proof of valor if you run him on the tanky build because you're gonna see it makes him take zero damage basically it'll make him very very powerful for your stats, guys, I definitely, definitely recommend at least, the very least, 20,000 HP and about like 1,200 defense. But you also want him to be decently fast so that when you actually use your S2, you can actually cut in front of units. Having a tanky remover is very nice to have at like 230, 240 speed because if you have him at that speed threshold, you can actually cut cleave teams. So if you actually go against the RAN and a RAN S2s and S3s, you will cut the RAN and also steal that immunity buff and attack buff, which is very, very nice. And, you know, the rest of your stats don't really matter too much. So you just want them to be very tanky and very very fast so you can actually cut having enough speed isn't really a requirement but it will just make it very very nice because like i said you can then pick him into cleave teams very very easily uh, for his imprint guys you definitely want to run him on the imprint concentration even though your tank build because of the fact that this is your base attack and you'll actually get decent attack and make your s2 and your s3 hit a lot harder this is pretty much it for the tank build though uh, pretty much for the tank build all you need is s3 and s2 maxed out uh, s1 you don't really need to care about too much this is mostly going to be for the damage build which we'll talk about right now now for the damage build guys this is the build that you're looking out on your screen here i kind of recommend this build um very very strong now for the sets guys recommend speed set like i said speed set is just going to be universal and this is kind of why wyvern is so good or wyvern is so good to farm because of the fact that speed set is so good and it's going to be very good on ramiro as well for the secondary set though i personally recommend either crit chance or penetration i don't have a penetration set available so i can't actually use it uh, penetration set is very good for damage dealing ramiro because even though the fixed damage doesn't scale with it the initial damage from his s3 is also very very high on this build and also his s2 and s1 will hit very hard so penetration set is the best but you know like i said i don't really have a spare penetration set so i have my ramiro on a crit set which is going to be fine as well now for the artifact guys you want to run draco plate if you have it there's a lot of other good options right you can run like um portrait of the saviors even you can run uh symbol of unity as well which is very very popular on him but i like running draco plate because it makes him more tankier you're going to see that he'll take less damage from critical hits which is going to be you know the majority of the damage you're going to take from damage dealing units uh but yeah like i said multiple options for the artifact now for his stats guys uh you just want to kind of make sure that he is decently fast enough to you know take a turn and get his s3 off so about like 220 speed will be fine you want 100 crit chance for sure and you want at least 3000 hp and you want at least 250 percent 
10% crit damage, and everything else can either go into bulk or more damage as you need. This unit, guys, is going to be very, very strong on this build. If you have a good supporting cast around him, he can one-shot pretty much anything with his S3, and if you can actually get two of these off with his Soulburn, like, you're going to win the fight pretty easily. Uh, you're very, very good for nuking a unit at the start of battle, very good against ice units, just anything that is uh, a very high-priority enemy on the enemy side, you can actually just nuke it very easily with a damage Rumuru. Now, the thing with damage Rumuru, though, guys, is he isn't as flexible as tank Rumuru, in my opinion, and honestly, in longer fights, I find that tank Rumuru does a lot more because he can get more S3s off, more S2s off and just cycle a lot more buffs with his s1 but damage remover is very good in like guild wars offense and if you are playing a very aggressive draft with like a cleaving style and you can surprise people with a very high damage remover but you know tank remover is going to be more popular nowadays especially on defense teams uh, where he is more popular um, recently and he's going to be more flexible that way because you can actually use a tank remover to counter cleave where damage remover kind of just gets one shot Overall, I recommend if you can build him on the tank build, you should build him there. Otherwise, DPS Rumor is fine. I just find tank to be a lot more consistent. Now, for his skill enhances, guys, let's talk about this very quickly. Uh, on a damage build, you're going to definitely want him on um, fully maxed out. But even on a tank build, having him maxed out is not that bad either. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure his S3 and his S2 are maxed, though, no matter what build you run him on, because of the fact that it is going to be the bulk of his damage. And honestly, since I have so many catalysts and all of these uh, friendship points from, or friendship skill points, might as well just max him out. Max him out out now uh, because you know i do use him a lot and he's very very strong and this unit guys if you don't have him i definitely recommend pulling for him uh, just keep in mind that he is running alongside milim which is another very strong pvp unit so you might want to you know consider your options there but also keep in mind we have a new collab unit coming out very very soon smilegate actually teased that a new unit is coming alongside ramuru and uh, Milim here, uh, but you have to keep in mind that the collab will end on the 25th of May, meaning that the new unit will probably come two weeks before the collab ends. So basically on the 11th of May, we'll have that new unit running alongside Ramiro and Milim. It'll be a triple banner. Uh, so maybe if you guys don't have enough bookmarks, you want to wait for that new unit to come out and see which one is the strongest and pull for that one first, which one is the second strongest and pull for that second, and etc. And then, you know, you can actually manage your bookmarks better that way. Uh, also, guys, you guys might be wondering, is his artifact good uh, the thing is his artifact is very good even for himself the thing is his artifact is not really run a lot because of the fact that there's rng and the only way to get past, past this rng is by maxing out the artifact and trust me like maxing out this artifact is super hard because you're gonna have to spend a lot of money and pull for a lot on his own banner because you can only buy one copy of this artifact from the shop um, every time this collab runs so you have to be very very careful i think this artifact if you pull it it can be okay but i'll just hold on to it until uh randomly by chance if you get very very lucky you actually get you know all the copies for this artifact but otherwise warrior artifacts there's a lot better options out there that being said that's pretty much how you want to build Ramiro, guys very very powerful unit very fun to use uh, one of my favorite units to use and when he first came out he was super super broken um and i think smilegate has kind of changed the meta so he's not as broken anymore but he's still very powerful and definitely a fun unit to use especially with his s3 and his animations look sick as well that being said i hope this video helped you guys out and i'll see you guys next time peace <laughs>